This is the Simplistic Reviews Podcast. They talk movies. They talk TV. They talk to the undead. No, we don't. No, but that would be a show worth listening to. I'm your announcer, Julie. And if you hadn't guessed from the way I talk, I'm a Swede. Here are your hosts, Matthew Stewart, DJ Valentine, and Justin Polizzi. Hello Mayans, we're still fucking alive. Fuck you. <laughs> Speaking of Mayans. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was very agitated that the Apparently. Mayan, Mayan prophecy never came alive. This is the Simplistic <laughs> Review Podcast. I was waiting for the blockbuster Roland Emmerich movie. <laughs> oh, never happened. Oh, John Jesus. Cusack never came. He never chased, he outran an earthquake in a limo. Uh, <laughs> this is the Simplistic Reviews Podcast. He was, he was, he's I'm, been waiting uh, at the K-12. <laughs> I'm uh, Dijon Valentine, DJ for you guys. I am black. I'm joined with Matthew Stewart, who is white, and Justin Polizzi, who's Fifty Shades of Grey. Grace. <laughs> I'm Grace. New Jersey. I'm New Jersey. <laughs> this is I'm our, in between. <laughs> this is our sophomore episode, so we will try not to have a sophomore fuck up like uh, Shyamalan did. Wait, you didn't have a fuck sophomore shit. What was the shittiest movie? You- well, the, the second movie was Unbreakable. Was it like the uh, Unbreakable? Was that like when he started fucking up? Nah. Uh, you liked it. You liked Unbreakable, and you liked Signs for some reason too. I do. I like I, Signs. I did too. <laughs> you don't God. like you don't like Signs because Mel Gibson's in it. it has nothing to do with him. <laughs> Why don't you like Signs? What's it's the problem? Stupid. What? It's when you when the whole twist is that the the aliens don't like water and. Okay, first of all, these aliens are stupid as hell because didn't they realize that the Earth is like covered by ninety percent water? Why the fuck would they come to Earth? Why do you think they're smart? To that point, <laughs> yeah, these you... are like the stupidest alien. This is like on par with ET. ET is a little bit smarter than the aliens and sons. Well, I mean, he, he's kind of ET is kind of like the like the special needs alien of all the aliens. You know, they got the xenomorph aliens, kind of like the dog. And then, like, <laughs> E.T. is like the special, like the one that claps his hands without touching his Rank fingers. Rank your top aliens. <laughs> well, my top alien. Hmm, who would be the smartest alien in the world? Uh, Barack Obama. He's pretty. He's pretty yeah, here we go. He's from Krypton. Yeah. We're starting stuff now. <laughs> and then there's there's Spock somewhere in there. But when you get down to the low grade aliens, you got E.T. He's he's like uh you know hey you got he's the sloth from the Goonies alien. Kind of okay. I'll, yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah, you know, you know. I always thought the whole alien thing was hilarious because, like, they travel hundreds of millions of light years away, mm-hmm. and they can't they can't uh, can't land correctly. They crash. <laughs> they always crash. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do have a lot of crash landings. <laughs> Sir, should <laughs> we put these? Should we put landings. these wheels on the uh, spaceship? No, no, we got to get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, Denzel Washington's piloting this alien spacecraft <laughs> under the influence of Budweiser. Should we talk about Starship Troopers being on for uh, like all day? Is that like, like a, the last that, two weeks? Is that like a Christmas movie now? Is that like uh, apparently? <laughs> it's a Wonderful Life. Uh, Michael Ironside. And... Starship Troopers. <laughs> I just want a Michael Ironside movie marathon on Christmas Day. I want like a Michael Ironside bobblehead doll for my desk. That'd be Damn, yeah, that that would be a good bobblehead to have. But what I'm Michael, Google that. Hold on. But which Michael Ironside <laughs> character do you want? Do you want like you know the the uh, Starship Troopers Michael Ironside? Do you want? I want the first X Men First Class Michael Ironside. <laughs> 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 the, the, the cameo Michael Ironside. <laughs> I remember when I first saw that. <laughs> and I'm like, there he is again. <laughs> Why is he here? <laughs> Why is he in this movie for five seconds? <laughs> I want the I want the Richter Iron side. So on all seriousness, we yeah, get the I brass, want the Richter one too. Want the brass tack seriousness here, you know? Yeah, it doesn't look like they have one. I'm oh, looking. Son of I don't a see bitch. anyone. Son of a bitch. Someone to get on that. Do you guys like ever look up anything that's like in the National Film Registry or anything like that? Because about two weeks ago, they put out, like, a new list of films that are being yeah. added to the registry and shit like that. I saw that. It's, it's like, I guess every since 1989, they've been putting out, like, 25 films, or uh, I guess putting 25 films into this giant registry. And this year, they had uh, The Matrix they put in, 
Of all, wait, 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 wait. Greatest of all time? Is that what he's saying? No, no. The, the these film these film. movies aren't listed as like the greatest of all time. They're kind of like um, culturally relevant oh, okay. to like all right, all right. on a worldwide scope or something like that. So, I mean, you think about The Matrix, yeah, it did like a lot of copycats came out after that. Mm -hmm. It, it was that and uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's and a few other things or something like that. The Matrix, mm -hmm. is, the Matrix itself is a copycat because uh, they stole the script from that lady, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah, but I mean, they, they, felt, they stole like the actual maybe story, but like the visual look of it. It's like how many movies came out after The Matrix that were like oh, so bullet, time, bullet time every fucking place, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, like even video games, Max Payne and all that shit. It was all <sighs> bullet time. Everybody wanted bullet time suddenly. So mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know. I thought it was kind of cool and. I kind of and I got to think I was looking at the list. There's like 600 movies on the list right now, and I was like about f five movies came to mind that they weren't on the list. Mm. And I noticed that Die Hard wasn't on oh, the list. Oh fuck you then! This list is bullshit. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> oh fuck! This is like the uh, fuck DJ list. Two, yeah. two of my favorite uh, movies are not on the list. <laughs> uh, Pulp Fiction's not on the list. What? Yeah, Saving Private Ryan's not on the list. Uh. Okay. Oh, that's just pissing on veterans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's other war movies, but that one sticks out of my mind as like one of my favorite war movies. The first three are like fuck DJ, fuck DJ, fuck DJ, fuck veterans. <laughs> and then, me personally, too, that stood out for me that I would like to see on the list. I'd like to see Clerks on there. Clerks? Oh, you mean like the and, black and white kind of? Comedy. Kind of just independent spirit type of thing, where it's like that's one of the probably one of the better independent stories, like independent movie stories or something like that in terms of the movement mm -hmm. and then there's no Toxic Avenger Ooh. you want Toxic <laughs> Avenger what? where the fuck is a Toxic Avenger well first off first off I'm I, pretty I, sure it's just automatically in there so yeah <laughs> don't worry it's about it it's a spirit it's like yeah okay I, you I'll, want, I'll forget about you it you want Toxic <laughs> Avenger to share space with the good the bad and the ugly well cul for cultural relevance sure Toxic Avenger yeah, dude, Toxic Avengers, I mean, they had a cartoon, they had toys, they had everything for Toxic Avengers. Well, so did fucking My Little Pony, but I don't want, you know, My Little Pony. It wasn't a movie, motherfucker. It's not hey, like hey. You put the goddamn uh, Care, Bear, Care Bear movie or uh, Rainbow Bright movie in there either. You need to check your, well, first off, Rainbow Bright, the movie, was fucking awesome. Second off, <laughs> <laughs> you need to check your Netflix, because I guarantee you there's about four or five My Little Pony movies <laughs> somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, direct to, like, TV. Still counts, DVD. still counts. <laughs> Oh, F you. <laughs> it needs to have theatrical release. You need to be able to be, walk into a theater and say, one for my little pony. <laughs> In a trench coat. Yeah, exactly. Sweating yes. deeply. <laughs> With no pants on. With no on pants on. <laughs> That's the only way you can qualify to be on this list. <laughs> you must be wearing a trench coat. <laughs> With no pants. You, you have to run around the block. Socks out. You have me. to have really bad... You have to... Be breathing really heavily for no reason. <laughs> and sweaty at the same time. Sweaty at the same time. You always have your hand, your right hand, in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> like, could could you either of you guys think of a movie you would want in the list? I mean, I, I don't have the list in front of me, or like a movie uh, that comes to mind. The, that you the would... fact that Die Hard's not in there, it's the greatest action film of all time. I, I, yeah. I, will, I will fight a man on a, like, American Gladiator style over that big cliff they do in the army commercials with the lava monster. For yeah. anybody who <laughs> anybody who tells me that Die Hard is the greatest action film of all time, no, this is the crazy. only reason why I signed up. It's for that lava monster. No, but you can go on their website. I'm sure you can look up National Film Registry and you can submit films. And stuff I am like looking that. at it right now. All the all the hate. It's interesting. It's from. it's you know it's it's cool that they're doing that, but like we've kind of already made the point they've made some big fucking mistakes by not putting certain movies on there. First off, yeah. Matrix should not be above Die Hard. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm for Matrix being you know, groundbreaking, whatever, but action film. Die Hard is the first thing that comes to your fucking mind, okay? Yeah. Action, villain, hero, anti-hero. If you want to talk about breaking fucking ground. Oh, my um, God. What? Uh oh. <laughs> Hopefully, is this is it the film? I, I don't know if this is the list, but the films that are on there. But apparently... Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm about to get really pissed off. <laughs> well, there's a couple here, I could say. <laughs> apparently Big Mama's on there. Big. No, you're looking at the wrong big what? Big, list. Big, wait, wait, did you say Big Mama's house? Is that what you just said? Yeah. No, get them. No, this is, this is a list made by children. <laughs> and maybe it's a voting list. It doesn't say anything about it. Just it, could be, it, it could be a voting list. Who maybe. consciously voted for Big Mama's house? What groundbreaking... Yeah, 
I mean, is that the end of Martin Lawrence's career? Is that why it's on there? I think Maybe these are ones. It's culturally significant. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me the good, the bad, the ugly, and saving Private Ryan is taking second fiddle to an aged comedian in a, fry, a fat suit? Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, that's all I kind of wanted to mention. I thought it was something interesting I was just reading the other day, and it kind of made me look at the list and see what was missing. So, you, you, Cannibal you Holocaust met? should be on there. If you want to put, if you want to put trauma on there, you've that. got to put Cannibal <laughs> Holocaust. <laughs> the, the most violent film ever put the celluloid. <laughs> Let's do uh, Word of the Month. Say word. It's the word of the month. Yeah. That's Cameo. He dug up Cameo for this. I'm more ashamed than you are. Justin, uh, what's your uh, word of the month? Word of my month? Uh, well. Mary. Mary? Mm. Mary. Mary Tyler Moore? Yep. I was thinking more like something about Mary, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Quick on the drill, I am. Quick on the drill. <laughs> Sorry, I do I do that often. So Mary, you had Mary, uh, something about Mary you, you were watching this week, this month? No, no, it's just Mary, just because Christmas and uh, you doing the uh, the crappy and you know happy. So Mary yeah, would we, be my thing. Yeah, we didn't have many crappies this month. I mean, I don't know. I don't think we any of us really go out of our way to really review crappy movies. I was for a while. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was your mission. <laughs> that was my mission for a while. <laughs> I'm gonna watch every piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just, I was, I was happy because I was merry because, like, you know, we had all the great films on and stuff like that on TV. Um, like I was watching uh, Christmas Vacation and mm. and uh, Planes, Trains, Automobiles. Oh, great film. So I was, I was just merry. I was just a merry person. There's something about no, planes, trains, and, planes, trains, and automobiles. I'm that, being that, a better person in life. <laughs> planes, trains, and planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> for some reason, that film, it's like I'm having the the, the greatest time. I'm literally laughing my ass off. And then yeah. the last ten minutes of the movie, it's like, hey DJ, crying. I'm like, I'm like what? I'm gonna kick you in the nuts. We're gonna kick you in the nuts. And you're gonna cry like a bitch. <laughs> It's like, yeah. why, why did you do this to me, movie? Because <laughs> then I saw, I, I found, I wrote, you know, the Lawless Heart one film I saw mm -hmm. on the man, and I was like... With Bill Nye. Yeah, yeah. I was very surprised, and uh, so I was, I was quite merry that I found an actual movie on the man that, that like, wasn't, didn't that, make me want to commit suicide. <laughs> that wasn't crap? That wasn't Universal yeah. Soldier The Return? <laughs> 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 that wasn't Dolph Lundgren starred? <laughs> no. No, that's what most of those films are on the man, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was oh, a yes. merry month. Definitely. Well, Matt, what's your uh, word of the month? I, w I wasn't going to do this, but I mean, I feel it's kind of... No. Elephant in the room type of thing. So, my word of the month it will be Newtown. Oh, okay. And just because it's important that we kind of like talk about it a little bit. I mean, we don't have to spend a lot of time. I don't. I don't intend to, sp to talk talk about it a lot. But this year's been like a weird year when you think about like shootings and crazy shit and stuff like that. One just happened this morning here. Another one. Yeah, Jesus police Christ. station. Oh my god! The guy walked in and shot up some police. God damn, man. I yeah. Mean, but, hey, don't worry. Wayne LaPierre from the NRA said, we need <laughs> principals with guns and <laughs> teachers with guns because that's going to solve the fucking problem. <laughs> a hero with a gun will stop a bad guy with a gun. Yeah. These fucking NRA people are the craziest <laughs> goddamn people I've ever heard in my, in my friggin' life. The thing, that, I mean, the thing that pisses me off, I, think, I don't know if it was an NRA guy, but I, I, I can't remember who it was, but they were saying, well, it's the... It's the films and the video games, and I'm so enough of that bullshit. I, People got to get over this whole crazy notion that it's a damn Breakfast Club. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, last I checked, uh, before there were such things as TV and video games, Shakespeare was making plays where. Fucking people were killing people by the boatloads. Yeah, but he, he, he wasn't using guns. Uh, he was using words and uh, daggers and poison. Oh, uh, right, right. You know, right, it's murder was just invented when the Matrix came out. Murder just oh, yeah. came around. Did, didn't you get the email about that? I missed that. I missed that. I was like, oh, what, what is this? message in a bottle. What is this murder thing? Alfred Hitchcock <laughs> never made films called murder. Wait, yes, he did. All of his films. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was dying. I mean, even killed. fucking birds were killing people in his fucking movies. <laughs> yeah, and um, it, it's just I, I'm, it's I'm just an excuse. That... So you, you know, the person who has blood on their hands. 
you know, doesn't fess up and say, yeah, uh, I mean, well, maybe we should do something. Yeah. I mean, in, I mean, and they keep oh, the Second Amendment. Hey, you know, to be honest with you, I'm all about the Second Amendment. People can have guns. I, I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. It's the irresponsible idiots at gun shows or people that don't pack up their guns properly so people find them and grab them then shoot that person who had the gun and then kill fucking 17 kids or 16 kids at a fucking school so but it, uh, I think uh, Nicole Nicole brought up this point to me where it's like you know what the <clears throat> second amendment is kind of an outmoded amendment anyway you need to revise it or keep it the way it is and if people want to have guns and shit like that you know what you guys get the flint the flintlock guns that they used back in 1791 <laughs> those are the guns so that they wanted those are the guns you're allowed to use you, you can't well, use anything else but those right you know well, cuz that's they never thought there was going to be automatic weapons 200 years ago no i mean it's <laughs> but when you have a um system a company a club a whatever you want to call it a boys club a yeah. boys club um <laughs> actually have power over a government to stop um, national lists of crazy people and you know they don't want that they want it to be a lot easier for people to get guns they're not saying well okay let's let's stop the crazy people or let's uh, let's see who has what they don't want that. They blocked it. They've used money to, to stop that. So I think that's the problem. It's like they're not even even trying to. They're they're trying to make it even worse as it is. They're not even trying to to implode it. They're just exploding it all around yeah, I mean, and blaming it on other people. It's a business. I mean, it's a you know? lobbyist. You have your gu- your gu- you have your gun so lobbyist. Like a... You have your pharmaceutical lobbyist. You have all these people that are buying politicians. Anyway, hey man, yeah, you, we we have to we have to mention it just a little bit. But that's it. Let's fucking bring it back up, DJ. What's your fucking word of the month? Well, my word of the month could be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to your word, you guys' word of the month is a little bit. Uh, I mean, Justin made me feel good, and then that yeah. made me feel What's like, up with that, like man? come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt flows, can I switch man? my Matt word now? <laughs> depressed. It's like Matt's a cocksucker. Matt made me like hate my own country, and burn up the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally like. like I'm literally leaving. I'm getting getting my passport ready. <laughs> in the grand, See you at the border. <laughs> in, the grand, the border. In, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, I guess compared to what we were just talking about, this is kind of a trivial word of the month. But uh, yeah. my word of the month is Trek, as in Star Trek uh, yeah, trailer. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Justin. I think I was talking to you what, what on uh, uh, Facebook, and I said something like, "Man, I really." Wish they would just say that fucking Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. is con already, and he's like, well, you get kind of like he he didn't you didn't like really yell at me. You're kind of like, well, it could be cool if it's not. And I was like, nah, fuck that. I want con because I love con. Con is awesome. <laughs> well, I said something along the lines, I hope it isn't. I hope yeah. You said I hope it isn't. I was like, no. What the hell are you hoping that for? And then I I, I kind of like thought about it and I started reading more material. And the yeah. more I read more material, I'm like. You know what? I don't think it is con, and I don't know. I think that's cool. I think I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I'm I'm I'm, I mean, I'm I'm balancing two things where I'm like I really love con, and I think Benedict Cumberbatch, who as an actor who was so badass he couldn't be Doctor Who. They're like, you're too badass. We're gonna make you Sherlock Holmes. You're so badass that we can't even make you this seventy year fucking you know England staple. We're gonna make you an even bigger one. Him playing Khan was like blew my mind. I was like, that's perfect. And then I realized, well, his name is John Harrison. I was like, maybe it's an alias. So I'm just trying to like find any type of thread to lead it back to Wrath of Khan. And then, you know, as you were saying, maybe it's somebody different. I'm like, I, I hope now that it is, but something makes me think that J.J. Abrams is trying to pull a Chris Nolan and say, oh, it's not. His name is John Harrison. Like fucking Miranda Tate, that. Mm. Shit kind of pissed me off. <laughs> it's like you're driving down a road. No one was like, "Hey, we're driving down the road. Hey, is that a red robin up ahead?" And you're like, uh, "No, no, no. It's, it's, it's checkers. It's checkers." I need a gourmet burger. I, no, no, it's checkers. And you're like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it looks just like red robin. You well, sure it's not red robin? And you, he's like, "No, nah, it's checkers." And you get there, and he goes, "Hey, guess what? It's red robin." And I'm like, "I fucking know it's red robin. I've been saying it's red robin for the last thirty fucking minutes. Why are you trying to fake me out with this?" Uh, 
Miranda Tate Talia thing. So if it turns out that he actually is Khan, I'm gonna get pissed. Like, why didn't you just say he was Khan from the fucking get go? Yeah, just, he's got a he's got a better chance of being uh, Gary Mitchell. Yeah, but or Gary Mitchell. I don't. Or anybody. I don't think it's gonna go that way. I just think it's gonna be somebody, somebody made up, somebody new, which is to me better that way. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, it's it, you've already done Rathacon. Why touch Rathacon? Why touch Khan? He's already kind of immortalized in that second Star Wars or Star Star, Star Trek. Sorry, because I mean, we've all we've all seen the trailer. I guess right at this point where yeah, they they, it, they hint at Rathacon. It, it very much. I mean, to me, it very much seems that Spock's going to be dead at the end of this one. Oh, no yeah, what. yeah. Spoiler alert. Right. <laughs> thank you, ja- thank you, Japanese way. people, for uh, ruining the, the, the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't Spoiler see the international alert. Japan one. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. This, it's not <laughs> you. This, this, this the, is the trailer that I saw in the movie theater. Yeah, the trailer. The trailer for the Hobbit or something. Yeah, yeah the trailer for the I mean, movie. They 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 show like this kind of thing where it's like, hey, that's. Seems like the scene at the end of Rathacon. Are you exactly, spoiling yeah. the movie right here? <laughs> it could just be using ideas, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, usually, sometimes you'll notice that with Star Wars, uh, Star Wars, and Star Trek. Oh, why do we keep seeing Star Wars? Yeah. You're Star gonna Trek. have you're gonna you're gonna have Star Trek and um, Star Wars use, people like, attack you. ideas from uh, from episodes from the show. Yeah. Star Trek. But you I mean, know, there's certain there's, elements. There's, so there's things they're doing. I know I know. heard I, after the uh, first one, the or the the 2009 Star Trek. And JJ was like, "This gives us the leeway to do whatever the hell we want." And right. I'm because the different I, universe kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "Okay, yeah. that's fine." But then in the trailer, I don't, maybe he's having a problem with the marketing. Him and the marketing department aren't having the same thing because Alice Eve is playing Carol Marcus, which is she was only introduced in well, I don't know the television show or anything, but it was, I only know her from Wrath of Khan. And you're telling me this guy's a superhuman who's doing all this stuff. And he's trying to seek revenge, and I'm like, that's very Rathakani. And then you have yeah. the well, she was in, she was that character was in um, the TV show was with uh, Gary Mitchell. Gary Mitchell, oh yeah, okay, yeah. And then then you have, and I'm watching the, the the one you sent me, Justin, the nine minute thing, the first nine minutes. Yeah, yeah and then and Spock says the needs of the many outweighs the need of few, and I'm like, well, that's straight from fucking Rathakani. I hope you're, I understand what they're doing, but it's like. I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just being pig-headed where I want him to either completely do it different or do it. Don't, like, hedge your It doesn't pick. matter, because no I matter what, you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to see it, yeah. That, they, you know? don't give a sh- they don't give a shit yeah, about me. Yeah, <laughs> they don't I, give I, a I, shit I, about I, me. They, you're going to watch it no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's Khan or if it's some other yeah. guy they just made up. It's I, I think it's going to be entertaining. Lost, I mean, lost, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm, I've never been a Star Trek fan. I like the first one, but... You know they're making it. They're making the movies more fan accessible. Even if you haven't seen Wrath of Khan or any of the other Star Trek movies, even the newer ones mm-hmm. like Nemesis or anything, you're gonna like these movies just because they're well made and entertaining. But we'll have to wait until we we see it. I'd say because it, it could be different. You know. All right. Hold reservations. Hold please. our reservations. <laughs> Party of three. Party of three reservation. Hmm. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> things like this—they—they—they they, they just make me, I don't know, make me want to like write a letter to these fucking people, making them just understand, understand what I'm going through. Like when I'm watching them just fuck their own shit up, it's like, look, I just want to write. You know what? I'm gonna write a letter. You're gonna write a letter, Justin, and I'm gonna write a letter. And Matt, you're also gonna write a letter. Let's write a letter right well, now. Well, I'm gonna send an email. I don't write. Well, <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. We don't write in this country anymore. We don't write in this country. Fine, world. fine, fine. It's electronic. Uh, however, really you, however, you're gonna write a letter. Uh, Julie, play the the open to this new, brand new segment. We'll make it right fucking now. Simplistic Reviews presents a segment which, quite frankly, is the most sincere these three goofballs can get. This is Sincerely. Dear AMC, Thanks for pulling your heads out of your asses and deciding what to do with comic book men. Why produce a show and have it language in a time slot where no one is going to watch it? Thanks for getting with the program. Sincerely, Matt. Dear Comedy Central, What's going on anymore? I feel like we don't know each other. I feel we're distanced and I don't feel the connection anymore. You should bring back uh, Dave Chappelle. You know, when it was fun. Don't look at your friend, MTV. He's lost his ways. 
he's all into the rednecks and lunatics and 14 year olds getting pregnant. But I was actually into comedy. You know, he was into the whole music thing. And that's gone. Cool. Forget about it. I have an erection too. We both have erections. For comedy. For comedy. We have an erections for comedy. So, uh, let's get back on the uh, funny wagon. Let's do some funny things, Comedy Central. It's not like the movie channel plays TV shows all the time. Let's be funny for once. Come on. What were those days? Those days I miss I long so far away. Sincerely, Justin. Dear Eddie Murphy, I hear you're doing a Beverly Hills Cop television series. Well, that's a terrific idea. And perfect timing, too. Sincerely, 1989. Dear overzealous nerds and geeks, Stop getting so mad when people co-op things that you love. Things like Star Wars and comic books are for everyone, not just you. It's mainly you scenester and emo kids. Yes, you have an emotional, maybe childish and silly relationship with something. It's not worth cutting your wrist over it. And if you still want to cut your wrist, I'll be more than happy to hand you the knife. Sincerely, Matt. Dear Nazis in movies, why do you always have a British accent? Sincerely, Dr. Pelizzi. Dear producers of The Vow, any character who wears multiple oddly buttoned wool sweaters, backward straw fedoras, works at a recording studio, goes by the name Leo, and is played by anyone, anyone who starred in a step up film, can only be seen as what they truly are a giant fucking douche. Nice try to offset his doucheness by inserting an even bigger douche, namely Scott Speedman. I mean, look at his hair, it's fucking ridiculous. But it's not enough to supplant the overall douchitude that is your leading man, quote fingers. Oh, 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 and he sends pictures of himself shirtless playing a guitar. Super douche. Sincerely, man forced to take his lady to go see the vow. P.S. Hey, Tatum. Mighty Mighty Boston's called. They want their hat back. I mean, who are you trying to be? John Favreau slash Vince Vaughn circa they swingers? I hope to God it wasn't a hipster, because I buy your ability to convincingly deliver analytical dialogue as much as I buy bacon-flavored fucking vodka. So take off that stupid ass It's It's not mumbling! Nobody can understand a fucking word you're saying. No, 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 Rachel McAdams, I love you, baby. Fuck, I'm out of room on this paper. Damn it, fuck! This has been Sincerely, and I'm sincerely glad it's over. <laughs> Dr. P Dr. Pelizzi <laughs> subscribes Rosetta Stone for you British Nazis. <laughs> that's, a that's the greatest deer ever. Deer Nazis in movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, have their own, they have their own union, so talk directly to the you union. Gotta, you gotta always... <laughs> All right, uh... <laughs> That's the end of our uh, Sincerely segment. Uh, let's do a TV roundup. <laughs> you do the, uh, you do the HBO sound pretty well. Uh, you guys watch anything on the on the boob tube? I, I'm calling it a different synonym every 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 month. I guess last last time it was the telly. Now it's the boob tube. Boob tube. Boob tube. I mean, uh, did did you did you finish uh, Boardwalk Empire? Justin, of course, I finished the day oh. it aired. I was, I was very, I was very happy with it. Yeah, DJ, did you catch up or? No, no, I'm still behind. giving up. I, no, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm now that I have some time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch Walking Dead uh, tonight, and then I'm gonna get on board Walking Bar. I'm only the season behind. Do so your I'm, homework. Do your homework. I'm doing. I, uh, I wasn't too. <laughs> I liked it. I just that, that last shot. Um, there's, there's a whole. Uh, speech that he says that no more will never nobody will ever see me again blah 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 yeah then the last shot and he's walking through a cloud <laughs> <laughs> kind of counteracted itself and <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like nobody remembered me but I'm walking through a crowd yeah, this way. and yeah, people will true. know who I am because they'll recognize me like that one guy <laughs> I, mean, I mean unless he's gonna like reinvent himself next season where it's like people will know who I am but they just won't know who's doing what is being done or something? I don't know. Yeah, he's gonna be like some kind of godfather figure that's gonna sit behind kind a desk, of. I guess. Yeah. 
I mean, I I liked how it ended. I was. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to spoil for DJ. No, you, you, don't, don't, you guys go ahead and spoilers? do it. Spoilers? Just it, for the audience. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Here comes some yeah, spoilers. Yeah, audience. Yeah, we're going to break some break some fucking hearts. Break some balls here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You really, yeah. you really not, are. That's not good. <laughs> Dear Nazis and movies. <laughs> <laughs> How are you breaking their hearts? They're already Nazis. Their hearts have been broken. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, killing off... Gip Rossetti. I was a little. I guess you had to do it to bring closure, but that was probably the most interesting character they had oh, yeah. in the in the three seasons the show's been going on. So, a little anticlimactic that way. But I liked how they did it though. They did it in a way that I thought was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was. I had my doubts of whether they were going to off him or not, and then when they did, it was like, oh, okay, well, that's par for the course. Oh, and uh, let's talk about the badass with the uh, shotgun. Walking God into damn, that house, yeah. just shoot everybody. Did they do? Wait, did they do Jip Rossetti? How did they do Joey Pants and Sopranos? I was kind of like, eh. Uh, What's that? Uh, Joey Pants and Sopranos. When he, yeah, he, I, I didn't like how he died because it was very nah. like, oh, he's well, dead. Oh, it was personal. Right. It was a personal one. That was a personal kill. Um, this was this was actually somewhat similar if you think about it because it was somebody who he knew killing him. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I can see that. It was almost kind of like a what do you call it, Steve Buscemi yeah. in Sopranos. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, whatever, what was his name, Blend, Blendetto? What was the first? Yeah, name? when they went to the house, and when they went to the house, and, and walked, Tony had yeah. him, Tony off them. Um, <laughs> um, and and also Matt, you you and I share somebody. And I'm sure everyone hates him, DJ too. Uh, the mom. Oh. Yeah. It's, what happened to her? She is the I'm, only I'm so reason. over and done she with her. She looks like she's reason. gone, right? I, I, I would you, get. I don't. I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do with her. I mean, well, because she, got... she was trying to kill Jeff Rosetti, Rosetti yeah. and he with the um, syringe, and with the, yeah, with the heroin. Yeah, yeah, he grabbed it and injected it into her. Yeah. So she killed the other guy with it, and she tried killing him. So well, I would she imagine she's kill... dead. She killed the guy by drowning the guy. Like she shot him up with the heroin, right, and, then, and then he kind of drowned. Where. She got shot up with the heroin. She was just kind of out of it, like she completely gets lost. That she was having a trip or something like that. So I don't know what they're gonna do with her. Her character's kind of. I just hope she's done. Eradicate the ship her. It, Get rid of her. The ship has sailed on her. <laughs> she she, she, she doesn't her, really have a purpose anymore. She and her dead fuck son are the only reasons I stopped watching that show. She, her, because I don't, I do not. Well, I you might be in luck because she might be gone. <laughs> Oh, please go away. I, yeah. <laughs> go There's away. a good chance they may not, unless they find some way to reinvent her character, but I don't think so. I mean, don't reinvent it. Don't reinvent it. Just get, get rid of her. Be, yeah, be, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, there's <laughs> there's still like a lot of shit to do. There's still a lot of kind of plot, plot wise, you can go a lot of. I think they're going to maybe concentrate more on the New York area this season or next season, New York and Chicago, and kind of keep New Jersey, like Atlantic City, kind of in the. Uh, in the background, I think. Right. I think that's where they're going to kind of go with it coming up. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, the league. Let's talk about the league because we oh. we talked oh, about yeah, it last yeah. time yeah, and we didn't we it. didn't really get into it. That ended, and I thought it ended good. I thought I liked it. I'd have to go back and watch it because I mean, it to me it's a little off putting because it's I don't know it's I think for somebody who plays fantasy sports and everything you already know how annoying it is and how kind of obnoxious the people are in it right. so. Not only do I, I don't want to live that in real life. I definitely don't want to watch that shit when I'm watching my fucking TV. I, 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 so <laughs> it's kind of that's where I'm at with that show. And yeah, but mostly, mostly now it's just like sex jokes and you know, dick and fart. Yeah, jokes. It's, it's not much into fantasy football anymore. It's still there. It's still in the background, but it's not. I don't think it's that um, overpowering. As it sounds like, you know, as we talk about it, hmm. yeah, I, get, uh, I like it. I look forward I, to I, it. I, I saw one picture of. Uh, I haven't watched it in a while. I think the last one I ever, episode I ever seen was with Chad Ochocinco and or Johnson. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he's yeah. Get the name right. He's back to. Johnson. I'm sorry, I can't keep up with these fucking name changes. He's like fucking Prince, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the last I saw a picture online it would, and I saw Jeff Goldblum who 
is a personal yeah, favorite of mine. Point. Is he his dad? Because he looks exactly like that. I forget the yeah, guy. he is. He oh plays, my god! Uh, it was it was just a picture of both of them doing like the duck lips thing, and it was he's, the, he's funny. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, that particular when he comes he comes back toward the end, and uh, you know that guy's got a hot wife, and he wants another kid with his oh. hot wife to to hold her down. Because <laughs> everyone keeps saying how good you know she she could do so much better than him. So when the father comes, they find out that he really he's uh, shooting blacks. So the father's like <laughs> kept trying to say like you can have my sperm, you can use my sperm, and then it jumps from that to you know I can sleep with your wife, get you a kid. <laughs> and and it's just, this is funny coming serious. from him. You know, this is whatever he says. Goldblum is, is Gold, Goldblum is I mean amazing. This, I mean he can make anything. Anything sound funny? I would like the next next season to have him in there a lot more. I think that would be amazing. Uh, I was um, I know I'm probably the only one here that watches USA shows, and uh, I watch. Yep. Burn. Yep. I know. <laughs> I'm alone on island. You're yeah. right. <laughs> I, I, and I understand why. Most of them are like. Well, I keep island. I keep saying I'm going to get around to it, but yeah, that's never. It never happen. happens. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> I watched Burn Notice. Burn Notice was the first show that ever made me watch USA shows. One, because it's filmed like five feet from my where I live. And uh, two, it was kind of like, wow, a spy show. This is right around the time where Bourne was still in the theaters and I was big into spies and stuff. And it reminded me of an older show called The Equalizer, where it's about an ex-CIA guy helping out people... They're remaking that into a movie with Denzel Washington, ironically. But it's like a you know a CIA guy helps people with actual problems using his CIA fucking knowledge, and that's kind of like how Burn Notice was. And it was fun. You had fucking Bruce Campbell in there, and it was you know, uh, Pat Oswalt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pat Oswalt is new for this, only for this season. But right. the sh- it's the show started where it was like n- like eighty percent him helping other people. And the other 20 was him trying to figure out why he got burned. And it was kind of like, so when serious moments happened, it was like, wow, I forgot. J- Michael Weston can fucking kill people. You forgot about it. You're more like, oh, he's telling jokes and shit. The last two seasons has flipped that, where it's now maybe even more. 90%, I got to find out why I got burned. Why is people uh, uh, trying to kill me? And he solves people kind of, uh, helps people kind of like, on the side and there's no more fun I'm like I'm watching this, the season finale which was good but like it's it's gotten dark it's gotten Nolan they nolan Bird Notice where everybody wow. every, Bruce Campbell's not telling any more jokes when Bruce Campbell's not telling jokes there's a problem with your show that problem bad problem as in you've I guess made a conscious decision to change the direction because it's I'm not having fun watching Bird Notice I'm like it's like getting into Boardwalk Empire where, okay, you're going to see some shit. There's going to be drama, and you're not going to laugh much. You're going to be like, here's the guy getting his head cut off. Burn Notice is like, all right, look, um, he ain't going to help anybody, and he's going to be crying, and his brother's going to get shot, and his mom's going to slap him in the face, and his girlfriend's going to break up with him. And I'm like, what the fuck happened to all the fun? USA was supposed to be... Is, USA shows are supposed to be fun. <laughs> because they're supposed to be cotton candy. They're not supposed to be oatmeal. Where you're just, this is good for you, and you're gonna fucking eat it. <laughs> it's <just> not. <laughs> that's essentially. What, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to yeah, USA. For, I, if I, I want depth, I mean, I'm I going to HBO. Why the dark direction keeps popping up a lot. It, 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 it seems like all these shows have gotten dark, like uber dark. I, I, th- I, I think it's just kind of the environment we are in this country, and I don't know. I don't know if it's like a product of the environment, but maybe the writers are a little kind of dark themselves, or the darkness is coming out of them, and they're writing the shows to be darker now. It kinda, I, I, I kind of just I think noted, people like it, so that's why I, they do it. I, I'm assuming, yeah. We're a cynical yeah. society. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we like dark, I mean... It makes us feel better when other people are miserable, I guess. Yeah. Like, oh, they're miserable like me. I can relate finally. Like well, that's why about... I like sometimes I'll watch uh, Strange Addictions on uh, is it TLC or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's... You know, you have the I love eat, eating uh, toilet paper. Like Baby powder. Or... Yeah, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I sit down for a second. Yeah, my life's, my life's good. I like, <laughs> yeah. I like my life's I'm good. Eating, I'm, baby I'm powder doing good yet. in life. <laughs> <laughs> You know, We're making ourselves so, feel better by watching them. <laughs> well, you know, I think this is how people do. They just like it like that. You got Bruce Campbell. Don't don't underuse him. Don't Sam Raimi him. <laughs> don't, yeah, well, don't Sam Raimi spider him. <laughs> that's kind of the beauty of how Sam Raimi uses him, though. I mean, that's kind of 
what works. It's like you like Bruce Campbell and that those small little cameos in a Raimi movie. I mean, aside from Evil Dead, of course, of course. Evil Dead trilogy. But Spider Man, it works. I don't. Really well. I don't want to see a show where Bruce Campbell is one crying, two, <laughs> two not telling jokes and being pissed off. I, if he's being pissed off and telling jokes, or just being pissed off and killing a whole bunch of people comedically, that's fine. But just being pissed off, like I'm going to my room. Nah, I don't want that Bruce Campbell. <laughs> it's like having Jeff Goldblum and not having him, you know, say anything quirky. Yeah, he does, and that's his, <laughs> that's the genius of it. And yeah. you're right. I mean, if you have that character, that you gotta actor use on them. that show, then you gotta use them, man. You need to utilize them. So yeah, with you on that. Uh, uh, Matt, you said you uh, had some uh, any shows that you were. Uh, I'll I'll save it for the end. I'll save it for kind of like the uh, looking forward uh, at the end of the thing. So I mean, I think we covered it pretty well. Okay, then uh, we can get into uh, I think your favorite segment, Matt. You want to do the singing part of it, or? Simply <laughs> the I, I I I could pay you a dollar every time, <laughs> no matter where we are. I have, to, I have two dollars right now. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all we can afford right now. We're small budget. We're small operation. We're growing fast. I don't. I want you. I want to be at a wake and then hand you a dollar and you have to sing just like Tina. <laughs> if only it was that easy. <laughs> to get you. If only I didn't have to. If only I could quit my job at the strip club. <laughs> this uh, this month we're doing um, this month we're doing what is the best time, the best time you've had in a movie theater this year. That is our simply the best topic. Justin, do you want to start off? Oh, um, best time. Well, this is this is a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, best time this this year? Yes, I would I, I would probably say Dark Knight Rises. Okay, I would probably say because I look forward to it, and uh, oh, it was an adventure going to that film. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I had to go to Atlantic I... City and uh, to see it in IMAX, and uh, you know IMAX is beautiful, sounds yeah. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went with a whole bunch of friends, so it was a good time. But I lost my keys to my car. Oh man! So I had no way of getting back home. I think Batman has something to do with this. <laughs> Sadly, that is not the case. <laughs> but Batman. Stole your keys. It was it was the best time. No, I'll, I'll say that. We'll leave it there. Right. That's for after hours podcast. I'm so close to <laughs> Justin Polizzi stuck in Atlantic City. Hmm. <laughs> fun for the whole family. <laughs> and I was only stabbed, shagged. What do you want to call it these days? Twice. I think you want to call it poked with a poked, uh, yeah, poked like with... Facebook poked. <laughs> Somebody oh, yeah. poked you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Richard. <laughs> <laughs> poked me. <laughs> uh, Matt, what is your best time you've had in the movie? Yeah, this is tough because there's been quite a few movies that I've seen at the theater and I had a a really good time. Granted, I don't go to a lot of movies with a lot of people. I kind of like, I'm kind of a loner when it comes to movies because I like to enjoy my movie and not be bothered by a bunch of assholes. You're the trench coat guy. You're the trench coat guy. I'm I'm the trench coat guy, but (laughs) no pants, no socks. Fully (laughs) naked. But my sock is actually under, it's like the tube sock. Where's this located? (laughs) <laughs> well, I said, well, that was that. That was that one time at the adult theater. Do you want to hear my story about my best time this year at an, an adult movie theater? Oh, please, please, I, I, please. All right, we'll save. We'll save that for later too. We'll, sw- we'll swap stories. We'll swap. We'll, <laughs> we'll swap. We'll swapping. Paul Rubens really wants to know. Yeah, <laughs> he really wants. He wants to, wants to know, know my trade secrets. How did you get away with it? <laughs> Not to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, but I think my best time was, God, like I said, it, it is difficult. I could probably give you a list of five, but actually seeing Pulp Fiction at a movie theater, like watching the movie, how people saw it like nearly 20 years ago, like at Cannes and all these other movie theaters, mm-hmm. and instead of seeing it on at home on DVD or something like that, seeing it in that original film and the original kind of grit to it and seeing it with other people including like a few friends that was pretty awesome because when that movie came out I was nine and I couldn't really tell you I was like uh, I wasn't a Tarantino fan at the time I probably barely even knew who he was I knew of him but didn't see his movies 
but seeing that on a movie theater screen was it, it, that was pretty cool it's cool seeing a movie that you appreciate and you kind of have I mean I'm, uh, I mean it's not, not my favorite movie ever but it's a movie that's kind of shaped the way I kind of look at independent film and just look at film and look at, and hear dialogue and see characters and see storytelling that to me had a really profound effect on how I would I would either one like to make movies two either like to write for movies or just three to watch those types of movies all the time so that was the first script I ever wrote uh, read, read was uh, Pulp Fiction yeah was... <laughs> and it's, it, it, it still holds up so well I mean the dialogue holds up well the characters it's a t it's a timeless movie even though there's certain things that may seem dated but just the way it's written no matter you can watch that movie 50 years from now and there will still be some type of re relevance to that movie 50 years from now and it was it was awesome seeing it on the on the screen. I never thought I would be able to see that. Yeah, I felt that way too because like when I saw Batman '89 and mm -hmm. I saw uh, Back to the Future, you noticed that the audience it felt completely different than going to a regular movies nowadays and seeing how the reaction was. It was yeah, just completely different, and everyone had such a blast. Uh, yeah, I, I remember I, I saw Batman '89 and in the theater. I was really young, and I was I was sitting. I think I, the thing that reminds me of that is because that was yeah, one I was of the, two. Yeah, <laughs> I was a, a little bit older than you. I was about what? six. I was about six. <laughs> that's one of the few. That's one of the few movies where I, I remember the first movie where I saw people like stand up at the end and cheer. Terminator Two was the first time I ever saw that, and Batman Eighty Nine was another one where it was just like, you know, uh, what, I went to the we went to the dollar theater to see it. <laughs> I didn't get to see it on like opening day or anything like Dollar that. Dollar Theater, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. It, it, it was he like saw Batman '89 and '91. Yeah, it's like a, <laughs> my Batman '89 was kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember like people in the audience were like they didn't stand up, but they were kind of just like at the end there was like wow that was fucking was like a, a collective wow what the f that was great holy shit. And that was kind of like it stuck out in my mind. It was a uh, it was a great experience. That in Pulp Fiction, I, I I don't I think I saw it on on DVD. I don't think I ever or VHS. I never First saw. Time I ever saw was VHS. I never I never saw it in the theater. Yeah, so I can only so. I can only imagine what that was like watching that. The the yeah. shock the shock especially Tarantino the shocks in his movies for an audience must be great because I mean I'm assuming everybody in the theater with you Matt had already seen Pulp Fiction. It'd be I great to see it for the first time in the theater. That'd be awesome. Yeah, if you saw it for the first time, I think it would be more fun and more shock. And I think it would be more of the feeling I had either watching Inglorious Bastards for the first time in a the theater or watching uh, just Django uh, for the first time in a the theater. Like, it has certain amounts of tension, has certain amounts of just stuff being really funny. A lot of things. I mean, the one thing I did notice is that a lot of people, in, when they were watching Pulp Fiction... They would kind of laugh at inappropriate times. I don't know if it's just the type of person they are, but there's a lot of funny stuff in it. But at the same time, inappropriate laughing at parts where it's like, is that really that funny? I don't know. It could have just been a bunch of young fucks. About, <laughs> you, like, you damn dirty kids, get out yeah, of here. get out of here, you scumbags. <laughs> you don't belong you're, in this movie. The old guy with the blanket on the front lawn. Yes, I'm the old curmudgeon. <laughs> get off my movie! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, um, my! Uh, I enjoy yeah. that way too much. <laughs> my uh, my best time. All right, DJ, you're I gotta, yeah. I got numero like, uno time. I got honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mention will probably be. I don't know. It's, it's probably a tie between. These are honorable mentions. They're not he's... the best time. Uh, Looper and Dread. I know Justin. You kind of were iffy on Dread a little bit. I had a fun time watching it. It's just not a great it, it, film. It, it just washed this taste of sliced alone out of my mouth. Which yeah, like I said, I think I, said <laughs> I think I said in the review, like it was a fun time because I was with friends and we all enjoyed it because it was goofy and but it wasn't yeah. a good dread film. Well, yeah, yeah. It just it's it took everything that you hated from the last dread film and said, uh, you want dread to keep his mask on? Okay. You want Dread to kill a whole bunch of people uncomplicatedly? 
fine. <laughs> if they took every if they took everything that you hated from the first Dread yeah. film and they flipped it, which I thought. But was, it it was definitely better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, but I mean, uh, Looper was one of those films where I was kind of like, man, it'd be cool if the movie did. Oh wow, it's gonna do that. All right, it'll be cool if it did. Oh, it's gonna do that again. Like it, it, it always. What I wanted it to do, it kept doing and doing it better. So Looper and Dread were kind of my unexpectedly good times, but my best time, it's very simple. Avengers is, there's no, I, I came to the realization when I knew Avengers was the best time I'm going to have in a movie theater, probably in the next five years. I took my sister to see it, and I think I told Matt this. We're sitting there watching it, and uh, she was watching it today, as a matter of fact, and she there's a scene where I don't know if you've ever seen the Avengers where they're all fighting together or whatever and they get to Thor and Hulk and they're on top of the uh the snake thing with a big fucking you know flying el- whale yeah, looking the flying thing. monster thing yeah and Thor uh Hulk stabs the thing with a piece of metal and Thor hits it with his hammer and my sister is sitting next to me we have the 3D glasses on the really octy 3D glasses and she just turns to me and she goes this is so cool, and that's what I knew. I was like, "This is a, this is nothing's gonna top this." My sister, who's like, and the, she's the most the far that you're gonna get from a comic book fan, is literally geeking out in this movie. And I don't think it's, I mean, Dark Knight was uh, Rises was great. It's just, it's not. It never left me uplifted at the end. I was more like, man, that was a. I just went through some shit. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, 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 yeah. I, I survived. I, really I say I survived. Not. It was like I, I went on a journey. Avengers was literally like, I'm gonna tickle you, I'm gonna tickle your geek for about two and a half hours. You're gonna be, and at the end you're gonna be ah, laughing. Dark Knight was kind of like, I'm gonna make you think on some shit. You're gonna think about it, and it's gonna change your perspective of life. <laughs> you're not gonna some parts you're not gonna like, <laughs> some parts you are gonna like, but you're gonna think about it. Avengers didn't really do that. It was more like, you know, I'm gonna put you on a Ferris wheel, and you're gonna have the fucking time of your life with all these people. And it, 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 you're gonna do. They're gonna. It's gonna take your expectations. It's gonna shatter your expectations. That's the best time I can probably. Even when I saw Dark Knight Rises, I was like, "This is. This was a really good movie." Mm. I mean, really good. It wasn't better than Dark Knight to me, but it was really good. But I didn't have a. I didn't like skip out of the theater after I saw it. I was kind of like, man, I was. Avengers. I was skipping out of the theater like happily. I mean. You know? Dark Knight Rises, I was kind of more like relieved that I was done with the movie because I felt like I had been through some like. Yeah, it felt like I was on a journey. I felt like I was on a journey. Like, oh my god, how could who the hell is gonna save everybody? Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen here. <laughs> Batman's in a fucking hole. I don't know where, where the hell is where Superman's nowhere to be found. <laughs> Bane <laughs> has a bomb. I don't know. I guess she's Talia. What what's gonna happen here? <laughs> So yeah, I, I, Dark Knight was more like uh, the, I'm gonna take your superhero adventure. And I'm gonna make you fear. <laughs> I'm gonna make you afraid of what's gonna happen. All those people you like, they may not make it. So and you're gonna have to deal with that shit. Bye, yeah. movie's over. <laughs> it's like damn. <laughs> so it, 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 again, I think the, those, both of those movies are doing two different things. Where Dark Knight is is touching on things that is Dark Knight Rises. It's touching on things that, you know, Avengers definitely is not touching on. It's the Avengers is more touching on your entertainment and Dark Knight's touching on your mind and it's touching on, you know yeah. almost uh, more your your mind and heartstrings a little bit. Heartstrings, it's 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 the drama. Avengers is the action film, Dark Knight is the drama. So I, I when it came to the Avengers I was just more Elated at the end, I, I I could see the promise, and especially because Dark Knight, this is at the end. They keep telling you this is the end. It's not going to be like this again, and you know you kind of like, you leaving the theater like fuck. I wish there was more movies, and you know, Avengers is like this is the beginning. This is just the this is the culmination of this. Is now we're starting to make this new universe. Here you go. So that's why I probably had a better time, though it was m- mostly Taylor telling me this is so cool and this weird. <laughs> Elliot, no, Elliot, like the guy in the trench coat. <laughs> no, she didn't like it. It was like E.T. Elliot, where it's like <laughs> <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> but no, Avengers is uh, definitely my best time, best time in the theater this year. Uh, so we'll do uh, looking ahead next. Uh, what are you looking ahead to, Justin? Next month, January. Well, I can tell you what I'm year. not looking ahead to. <laughs> tell me no, what. Please. No, 
Well, Texas Chainsaw. Three days is not what I'm looking ahead to. I what I am. Whoa, whoa, whoa. they're doing another Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. There's one every year. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Gangster Squad. Oh. I'm looking forward to Gangster Squad. So, DJ, and I, you, you and I were having that conversation about it yesterday, talking about how it's it MTVized. It looks like yeah. it looks it looks MTV. I, and I guess the name of it too, Gangster Squad. When I think of Gangster Squad, I think of Monster Squad. <laughs> You know, it's got that same kind of cheesy... It's got squad in it. It's got squad in it. It's got squad you know. in it. You know uh, what else I'm looking for? Mm-hmm. Movie movie 43. I'll see that. I mean, I like that. That looks that looks fun. It does. That Doesn't looks it? Like, yeah, it looks like a like a big... like a Something you would take your friends to and go like, let's just fucking... Let's either get stoned first or drunk and then go to the theater and just... I mean, look at the cast laugh. and then look at who it's directed by. Like everybody, ninety <laughs> percent of Hollywood is ninety percent of Hollywood. Yeah. Is directing it. Gangster See, Squad, I... does, does, it does, it does, it does, it's the look. I guess it doesn't look noirish to me. It looks very commercialized. The plot. Oh, sure. I, I wish they would. I mean, when I, we were talking, me and Matt were saying it's like L.A. Confidential looks like it was shot in the forties. Looks like a forties, not shot in the forties, but looks like a forties noir type film. Gangster Squad mm-hmm. looks like it was shot. You know, of today, like it was like it's cut, maybe because it's digital, it doesn't look like it takes place in the forties. It looks like it takes place now. And J- Josh Brolin just happened to be in a hat store and got a hat. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look. He's got so, a hat. so you're, you're saying, would you want to go see it? I mean, I'll I'll see it because I like the people involved. I like I like Goose Gosling and I like uh, <laughs> I like Brolin. <laughs> I like Penn. I, I'll probably and I like the director. I just it, I, w- I guess this is a visual thing. I, I haven't seen the movie yet, and this is another thing about the shootings that they reshot the entire climax yeah, the of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I don't agree with. That pisses I mean, me off. It, yeah. It's kind of like we. I also mentioned this to DJ, like the lack of balls in Hollywood and everything like that. It's like okay, a, a movie theater shooting happened. It's happened before, but now everybody's so damn sensitive about it that. I don't know how important this movie theater scene is to the actual plot of the movie. It could be completely irrelevant, but just the fact that you're going to reshoot it and take it out and replace it with whatever you're going to replace it with, and the and the movie's rated R. Second of all, it's you're already going for a lot of violence, so why even make the movie? Jack why not Ruby. just make it a PG-13 movie where you have nobody shooting people? We have people holding out their fingers and going bang bang. Why don't you just do that? <laughs> Jack Reacher yeah. showed balls. Jack Reacher didn't cut that beginning. The beginning no, of, he didn't. The beginning of Jack Reacher is, I, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a very, especially now with the Newtown thing, it's very, whoa. You, you notice it. You're, you t- you're taken aback a little yeah, bit yeah, it's, by it's, the opening it's, scene. It's, it's not, it's, it's not um, uh, as specifically the same, but it, it makes you think about it. Really, really quickly, and they didn't yeah. put like an advisory. This is, uh, you know, be warned of the first. A lot of the reviews are saying that, you know, be warned of the first ten minutes of the movie, but yeah. it didn't cut the whole beginning off like Gangster no. Squad did. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's the important plot point of the movie. It's like if you took that specific part out, there's no movie. Why even make the movie's gone at that point? So I don't know yeah, what I'm that just, part is. It just looks like something to finally go see because usually anything that comes out anymore, it's just like ah, I don't want to go spend fifteen bucks to see that. Mm-hmm. I'll just wait. It has a so, great cast. It has a great. I mean, cast. I'm sure it's not going to be a good film. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be the greatest film. Really entertaining, but I mean, it should be entertaining it's, it's to say like the a, least. There's, there's, a new school Untouchables is kind of what I envision it being, kind of thing. Uh, Matt, are you uh, looking forward to anything else in the uh, uh, new year? Two things coming up in. Uh, January. I guess it's more TV related, but I'll get I'll, I'll I'll talk about one thing movie related real quick after that. Community's coming back in January, which is good. Mm-hmm. And uh, the following that new Kevin Bacon show that's going to be on Fox. That's the name of it. Okay, I it's, didn't know the name it, of it. It's got some like they've they've been pushing for it on like Fox programming and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Seven. And maybe a little bit of that show Prison Break a little bit. Oh, Prison Break. Well, not Prison Break, though, with Alcatraz. <laughs> oh, thank <Sorry>. God. <laughs> Where, I mean, the concept of Alcatraz intrigued me. I never saw an episode of it, but... And you never the, will. The idea of it kind of <laughs> um, got me a little excited. But it's Kevin Bacon is, uh, I guess, some type of agent, FBI or CIA or something like that. 
and he's tracking a serial killer that escapes, and the guy uh, who played Mark Anthony James per, uh, Purfoy, he's playing the serial killer, and he breaks out and basically creates a giant serial killer cult, and I guess it's kind of uh, Kevin Bacon going around and tracking these serial killers, kind of, well, I guess maybe even throwing a little bit of like X-Files in it a little bit maybe too, so... I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool, and I like Kevin Bacon. So the only thing a wrong problem is that Fox, uh, when it comes to patience with shows, well, yeah, if this doesn't do anything, it will get canceled. <laughs> Fox canceled shows. Moment. Fox yeah, canceled that's shows. That's being brought back. That's going to be on Netflix now. Netflix uh, got the rights wait. for it. What show? Yeah. Yeah. What show? So, uh, Arrested Development. Oh, they're bringing it back. Oh, I didn't, wait. I thought they were making a movie though. Well. Yeah, that was originally the thing, and then all of a sudden Netflix is like, we'll buy a couple episodes. So, from what I read last time, is they're going to do the couple episodes, and there's a strong possibility they'll do a, a movie kind of thing. Not so, good. we both win. Yeah. Fan service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, I, Fox, yeah. But I, I mean, mentioned Community also. But the last season of Chevy Chase. Yeah, I mean... Well, I mean, this could be the last season of the show, too. Who knows? I, I don't know where... I mean, maybe it's going to get better now that Chevy Chase is gone and not calling black people the N-word or... Is that why you got... Is, kikes. Is, is, I don't know. Is that what he got in trouble for? Is that what he got in trouble for? I just thought... I just, no, he, didn't nah, like... he, just, he didn't like the show, right? He didn't like, he didn't like Dan Harmon for some reason. Mm. Well, I know Childish Gambino, a.k.a. Donald Glover, he's, like, big and famous now, so he might be not long for that show either. So, yeah. um, Joel McHale will work for Peanuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and I, I could see this being kind of the end of the run right now because they didn't even order like a full order of the show. I don't think this season. So, oh, Jesus, um, NBC. We'll see what happens with that. And uh, one more thing, I'll bring up. Have you guys seen that trailer for the uh, what's that new Gosling movie, The Place Between the Pines? Yeah, it looks badass. Yeah. I'm looking forward to is that, that. Is that's that the is that the one from the? That's not pretty, Nicholas Winding Reference one, right? He has another one coming out with the guy that did Drive, Nicholas Winding. Yeah, this Reference. is this is different. This kind of looks like a almost like the town meets something else. Yeah, I, I guess you could say. That. It's a heist movie, but yeah. he's like a motorcycle robber, which is kind of. Different. It's the guy who did um, Blue Valentine. Blue Valentine, yeah. Oh Directed yeah, yeah. Out. One of the most depressing films I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Blue Valentine it's... and Revolutionary Road are like neck and neck. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you, do you like your life? Guess what? <laughs> You're going to really like it after watching these two films. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my uh, looking forward to this next year, uh, I guess January we're going to stick to, but um, uh, two, Southland, which is probably the best cop show on TV right now uh, that nobody's watching. Because <laughs> it was on NBC, and NBC was like, "Hey, we don't like good stuff." And then it went to TNT, and it's still next. It's behind like the closer, so nobody watches it. But it's really good. Uh, what's his name from the OC? I forget his damn name now. <laughs> Adam Brody? No, not the other one. Oh. <laughs> the Adam Brody? No, the other guy. I forget. His, I forget his freaking name. Uh, and the girl that does the voices for all the Boondocks sons, <laughs> she's on there as a cop. Very good show, but it's it, the only other show that I, I was telling you I cannot watch taped. I must watch live. Premieres next month. It's Justified, the greatest show on television. Again, I will fight you on a mountaintop, American Gladiator style, with the army commercial mo lava monster under me. Justified is freaking amazing. Great show. Uh, it's a modern day western comes on FX next next. I think it's January 7th January 6th is it that soon? It's, it's really soon it's coming up quick I mean I see commercial they don't really promote it because they don't have to <laughs> yeah. they're like ah, just by time everybody who loves the show will watch it don't worry about it and it's a big big audience it's probably the only show other than Game of Thrones that I have to see live I don't I watch that and I watch it one more time on the replay it's freaking awesome uh Matt, I think I got you into watching it. You, you, you did, and I enjoyed it. The last, the, the what was it? The last season was this is the fourth season, so third season. It was awesome. I mean, I liked all the characters. I mean, it's a good show. I mean, solid, solid writing, solid characters. All the I mean, like the show. The good thing about that show was like when you're saying the characters, like every character on that show is entertaining. They, like the yeah. the smallest character, <laughs> his father, Raylan Givens' dad. He's on there like for like ten minutes. 
and I could watch a whole show about him. I can watch a whole show about dumb dumb Neil McDonough. <laughs> dumb dumb Dugan. Dumb dumb Dugan, Neil McDonough. <laughs> I could watch it. Oh, <laughs> I know you hate him. <laughs> stupidest name in comic book history. <laughs> that is not the stupidest name in comic book history. There's a guy in Superman called Mr. Mixelplex. That's way worse <laughs> than dumb. I don't know. It's clever at least. Is it is it really? It's better than dumb, dumb Dugan. It's like that sums up the guy. He's he's a dumbass. <laughs> but no, Justified. Digressing. Di- Justified is uh, my favorite show on TV right now. Uh, uh, it made me like Timothy Oliphant, which is very. I mean, some people hate. I was trying to get somebody at my job to watch Justified. He's like, "Who's in?" I was like, "Timothy Oliphant." He goes, "I'm not watching it." I'm like, "Why? It's a good show." I hate Timothy Oliphant. I hate him. I don't care what he does. He can be. Was it Hitman? Did Hitman do it? I, I think it might have been Hitman. Maybe. I had to be Hitman. Because what else has he done other than that? Uh, oh, he did Gone in 60 Seconds. Like, he was in. Uh, <laughs> what do you call it? He was, in, he was in Go. I liked him in Go. I, li- I love Go. And then he was in Scream 2. Oh, that could have been it too. <laughs> I like Scream 2. I think it's better than the first one. Scream 2, that's uh, yeah, the one. You might one. have a point there. Is that one? I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a little more twisty, a little more. I guess the characters were better, a little better suspense. I, I haven't seen it in a while, but I r- really remember liking it a lot better than part one. Is that the one where Omar Epps gets stabbed in the ear? Yes, and then Jada <laughs> Pinky gets stabbed in the stomach. And she <laughs> goes up on the stage and goes, <laughs> That's better than your Pierce Brosnan impersonation, by the way. <laughs> your, yeah. J- your Jada Pinkett. These, these movie impressions that I'm doing. <laughs> are magnificent. The Jada Pinkett one. It's uncanny. It's uncanny the resemblance that I can <laughs> have these characters. Well, I don't know about the resemblance, but at least the voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think you look like Jada Pinkett. That, not that much. Yeah. <laughs> You're not that tall. <laughs> oh, well, boy. Well, thank you. <laughs> Please, God. Uh, so uh, that'll do it for this month. Um, Matt, you want to give us the uh, email and. Uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, well, if you want to contact us multiple ways, uh, you can always email us. We are at Simplistic Review. Well, where are we at? Uh, simplistic Review. I don't even know where to fuck that. <laughs> where are Simpl- we? <laughs> just <laughs> Google it. Just, just Google Simplistic Reviews. You'll find us. Or you can go to Simplistic Re- or email us, Simplistic Reviews Blogspots at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Simplistic Reviews. We are on the Twitter machine at SR Blog Spots, and uh, we're on Pinterest, but we really don't do anything on Pinterest. But uh, we're on Pinterest, but it's there. <laughs> I one didn't day, even know that. One day I'm gonna get on that Pinterest when and actually post on, some shit. When the hell were we on Pinterest? <laughs> I don't know. For the crafty people out Who's there, who's running like, this place? I'm gonna do something clever with gelatin or something. I, 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 I learned. I learned how to boil an egg in an oven. I learned a lot. We, we have a Bill Cosby board. Uh, we have a Bill Cosby board. I'm going on the Bill Cosby board immediately. It's nothing but ghost dad. I, I, I'm definitely going there. <laughs> I went next to the yep. Morgan yeah, Freeman that, board. Uh, that's about it. That's uh, simplistic reviews. How to contact us? Okay, great. Uh, so uh, for Matthew Stewart, the illustrious Justin Palizzi. I don't know what illustrious means, but I like like saying illustrious. Sounds I'm, good. Sounds good, right? Uh, I'm DJ Valentine. Thanks for listening. We here at Simplistic Reviews wish you all a safe and happy new year. And by we, I mean, them. I could give a shit about your safety. I, personally, am gonna be irresponsible like a motherfucker. I'm drinking. I'm driving. I'm running this highly advanced cybernetic body into as much strange as I can find. Basically, I won't be happy until I'm waking up in a ditch on the bad side of West Baltimore. Sorry if that disturbs you. That's just how I get down.